Oh, hey, I didn't know you guys were here with me today. I'm Rick from Single Man Cooking, and uh, out here you just caught me. I'm doing a little R&R &R out here. Had a pretty stressful week, but I'm out here fishing today. I'm out here it looks like uh, I've drifted off into Single Man Bay, right off the Single Man Beach, right by the Newland Estate. And I'm here today. I'm just going to catch a little something to eat for supper tonight, I hope. And uh, we'll just see what happens. Since you, since you're here, you might as well join. Whoa! Hold on a second here. I haven't had much luck, but it looks like my luck may change here in just a second. Oh! Oh! Fish on! Fish on! Oh yeah! Oh! Oh, oh boy! This is gonna be a good one. Oh! Here we go. Uh, oh! Oh my God! Oh! What in the heck is this? Oh my gosh. Oh, well, this is certainly not what I had planned to catch. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know. Obviously, this is a leg. Oh my goodness, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to even say on this. Um, it's been here. It's been here a while, I'm sure. It doesn't have a real good smell to it. Um, there's a couple different things we could do on this. Um, of course, the number one thing would be to call the authorities. Heck, there might be somebody out there missing a leg, or maybe just missing, period. Um, you know, uh, another option we got, I guess. We could do the right thing. We could do the right thing and cook it. So that being said, single man, I'm going to have to call in an expert on this. Uh, I'm not sure who that expert's going to be yet because I really haven't ever cooked a leg like this before. But uh, the calf, the calf still, even though it smells a little bit, the calf is uh, still looks like it's pretty intact here. Um, the foot, foot's still there, but not a whole lot of meat it don't look like on the foot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to salvage as much as, as much of the calf as we can. And, uh, we'll have to go from there. Um, uh, looks like maybe he's, was wearing some dickies when he went missing. Um, anyhow, what we'll do is, uh, I'll call in an expert on this and get me some help on this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and head in and maybe clean this thing up and get her going. Uh, I think I may crock pot this one. Um, it's going to be pretty tender anyhow. It should be with, with it uh, being out here in the water. I'd say for probably two or three weeks anyhow. So anyhow, you never know what you're going to go, what you're going to catch when you go fishing with Rick from Single Man Cooking. So tune in again uh, here in a little bit, and I'll have this thing cooking up for you. So until then, uh, live like you're single and tune in to the Single Man Cooking Show. Hey, I'm Rick from Single Man Cooking, and uh, got a lot going on today. I'm glad you guys are here with us. Um, as you saw in the earlier portion of the show, um, I went out fishing, had a little R&R &R going on, and I caught something that was completely unexpected. And uh, to be quite honest with you, I didn't know how to deal with it. So um, I had to call in an expert of mine. And right now he's back here working right now, so um, I'm not going to bother him right yet. Um, but anyhow, I've got some homemade chicken and noodles cooking, um, which is going to be later in, a, in another episode. I'll show you how to do that. It's fantastic. Oh, and also uh, I've got, I almost forgot, I got single man cooking dry rub and I've got right here I've got some of it already packaged these are little sample um, sample packs um, we're gonna have them packaged professionally and they're gonna be for sale here before long so anyhow um, once again I caught something that I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you it made me nervous um, I thought that when I had that go around with the deer that's pretty hairy there, but um, 
this is uh, something that I really didn't know what I should do. I didn't know whether I should go to the authorities. I didn't know what to do, but then I, the old single man brain got to spin in its wheels, smoking its gears a little bit, and I decided to cook it up because that's the right thing to do. So anyhow, I'm going to let my expert, who come clear across the country, to get here. Um, I made an emergency phone call to him, and uh, this is Billy Big Rigger, and I'll let him uh, tell you where he came from and a uh, little bit of his experience. Hey folks, how you doing? Billy Big Rigger here. How you doing, Rick? I'm doing fantastic, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you coming on on such short notice. I know you've got a lot of experience on the road with some carcasses and, and such. Uh, a lot of carcasses. I've had a lot, ran over a lot. So. Anything that similar to what we're doing today? Well, yeah. Uh, back in uh, 95, uh, we carved up a lot of lizard. Okay. Now, we won't go into what a lot lizard no, is, but no, I, no. I am willing to bet that our viewers know. Yes. And it's a uh, matter of fact, it was the same cut of meat. Now, let me ask you, uh, this had a, somewhat of a smell to it. Yeah, it, uh, well, like a lot lizard, you know, a lot lizards have a little bit of a tangy type smell to them, too, but uh, it, it, it's good. We it's put good. a little bit of salt on it. Once you get your uh, seasoning and stuff on there and everything and start cooking it, pour a little gravy in it. Okay, now you were on clear on the other side of the country, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was about a mile out of shaky town when I got Rick's message and uh, everything and pulled into the pickle park. Now, and what's a pickle park? Bill? Well, that, that's a rest area. Okay. That's a rest area. And uh, after uh, getting your message and stuff, <coughs> uh, I unlocked the glove box. That's where I keep my little secret weapon if I need to get somewhere quick. And it's a little rubber ducky. And uh, I went out there and got in front of the old K Whopper. And uh, now, how fast? Well, how fast did you have to drive to get here? You got here like in what, yeah. Well, I was out there on on I one O and everything, just running the double nickel, just cruising. Okay. You know, double and nickel. I'm assuming is about fifty five. Fifty five right? mile an hour. Fifty five mile an hour. And. Uh, Everything, and then after I got that rubber ducky on there. Uh, now explain the rubber ducky. Well, it's just kind of a, it's a, it's a momentum. It, it, it motivates you to to go a little faster, get things done. Uh, after I put that up there on the hood arm, uh, on the old K Whopper. Uh, okay, you lost me there. The K Whopper. Well, well, K Whopper is a K W Kenworth. Okay, talk K Whopper, and uh, so. After putting the rubber ducky up there and everything, uh, I started running triple digits up there on I-10 and everything, and jumped up there on on 70 and uh, everything, and, and got in there. And some of my other trucker buddies, they uh, they joined in. I don't know. There must have been about 85 in all. And that's uh. But, now, how many does it take to well, be considered a convoy? Well, 85 is definitely a convoy. Yeah, we had rigs of all different shapes and sizes and everything. We even had a little microbus there to, uh, with some religious folks in there praying for us and stuff to get here on time. And I appreciate that, and I'm sure you do too. Absolutely, because but, uh, we got to get this show uh, rolling. I know there's been people that's wanting us to get this show out. Uh, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit, and I'm going to have you explain what you were doing here. I, I know you've been cleaning uh, the leg and getting it all cut up here. So uh, 